Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to implement dynamic drop-down navigation in Power BI. This video is a tutorial, which means that the link to the file used in this video can be found in my blog. So just uh, go into the description of this video, follow the link, and you can download this Power BI desktop so you can practice on your own. Now, I already have a video on my channel on how to implement a drop-down navigation in Power BI. So this video is a follow-up, and what we're trying to do is to make it a little bit more complicated. Instead of having a, a static drop-down navigation, we're trying to implement a dynamic drop-down navigation. So what do I mean by that? Let's take a look at this report file. So as you can see, I have four different pages in this report file, main, sales, R&D, and HR. So let's say I have a report file that has a main screen where I will have some main KPIs, and then I will have more uh, information for sales, R&D, and HR departments. And what I would like to do is limit the options in the dropdown for different people. So some people might be able to see all four pages, and others might be able to see one, two, or three, or four. The first thing that we need to do in order to get that navigation, dynamic navigation working, is we need to create a table. And in this table, we need to have a record for every page that we would like to be able to navigate to. You will notice that I also have the very first record that states, please select the page, and then it has a sort order zero. And then I'm listing all of the pages, all of the options below. Each page gets a dedicated sort order. The reason I do a sort order is because I would like to be able to control in which order my pages show up in the navigation. So what I do is I just use a sort by column option and, and I order my pages by sort order. The next thing that we need to do is create another table and that table will map which users have access to which tables. So here we see that Andre at KnowledgeBank.pro has access to all four table, four pages, main, sales, R&D, and HR. Then I also created an email sales at KnowledgeBank.pro. Uh, that uh, person will have access to main and sales. And then I also have HR at KnowledgeBank.pro, and that person will have access to main and HR. The next piece that is kind of important is to make sure that your navigation table and your navigation map table are not connected by a relationship. By default, when you create these tables, they will notice that you have some common attributes in both tables. Therefore, Power BI will try to link these two up. The way we're gonna implement our dynamic drop-down navigation, we wanna make sure that we wanna delete that relationship. So these two tables should not be connected. Now we're almost there. We just need to create two measures. The first one is current user. And all we're doing here is assigning user principal name into this variable. And as you can see, I created a, um, a card control that's displaying that value of current user. And we will be using this as we emulate different users as we try to test our navigation. The next measure we're gonna create is called navigation page. And what we do here is we are going to create two sub variables, page and page number. And in page variable, we're gonna copy the selected value of the navigation page column from that table we created for all the pages in the report. And then we also have page number, and in page number, we're storing the sort order of the selected page. Why do we do that? Basically, the reason we do that is that we don't wanna navigate anywhere if the selected value is this text here, please select the page. So as long as this is selected, I don't want to be able to navigate anywhere. The way, um, bookmarks work and buttons work in Power BI, that if, uh, if this measure does not uh, return anything, if it returns blank, then clicking on that button will not do anything. However, is this, if this measure does return something, then clicking on that button will return an error if this page does not exist. And since we do not have a page in our report that says, please select the page below, then we're just gonna make sure that that value does not lead us anywhere and we're not generating any errors. Now that we've done all of the pre-work, we're ready to implement our drop-down navigation. So the first thing we're gonna make it static and then we're gonna make it dynamic. So in order for us to implement a static uh, drop-down navigation, all we need to do is we need to create a slicer that is fed from our navigation page column. And then we create a button by going to insert buttons blank, 
And then in this button, what we need to do is we need to click on action and in action I had to move myself to make sure that you guys can see it. So here in action, you will have a, you will need to make sure that you select page navigation. And then underneath of page navigation, you will see destination. And that if you click on destination, you will be able to pick the field value. And then based on field, you pick the measure that returns the current navigation page, which is navigation page. Now, this is all you need to do to implement static navigation, which means if I click on the drop down, I see all of the three pages outside of the current page. Now, how did I filter out the current page? Very easy, I just use filter. And then if you click on the slicer, you will see that I don't wanna see the main page because I'm already on the main page and I do the same thing for all of the other pages. So now all I need to do is select the page I would like to go to, let's say it's sales. Then I'm gonna, since I'm in desktop, I'm just gonna control click and this will take me to the sales page. If I would like to go back, I'm gonna click on the drop down, click main, click go, and that'll take me back where it used to be. Now we have our drop down navigation working in a static fashion. Let's see how we can make it dynamic so that the options will differ for different people who are using this report. This dynamic logic is implemented in manage roles as role level security. So let's take a look at the decks that I use to implement that dynamic part. The first thing that we wanna do is we want to say that, so we're creating a role called navigation and then we're securing a table navigation, right? That's the table that feeds our dropdown. And what we want to do is for every row in this navigation, we would like to run this DEX formula. And if that formula returns true, that record will show up. If that formula returns false, then this record will not show up. So let's see how this logic works. The first thing that we need to do is we're gonna check whether the sort order is equal to zero. We have to do this because the minute we enforce our role level security, since we don't specify pages with sort order zero, so that the default value uh, in our mapping table, therefore I'm just gonna hard code it here and say, regardless of who is logged in, I always want them to see the very first record with sort order zero, the one that says, please select the page. So I'm just gonna put that in here and that will always return true, guaranteeing that I will always have this option regardless how I log in. The next piece is the following. We will use the contains function and this contains function will take a look at our navigation map and it'll see if the current record in the navigation table, which is whatever the table uh, page uh, that we're uh, potentially be looking at. So it's gonna go through all of the pages in the table and it's gonna say whether this page exists in the navigation map. So it'll be this join condition and it will always check that that page exists for the current user. So I need to check two things. Number one, whether this page exists, and number two, whether it exists for the current user. So only if that contains returns true, will that page be an option for me in my navigation. So let's go ahead and test this and see if this works. The way you test it is you have to click on view as, then you click other user and type in the name, the email address of the user that you're trying to emulate. The next step is to make sure that you're gonna check that rule that we're trying to test. So right now I'd like to log in as sales at knowledgebank.pro and I would like to be able to check my navigation logic. Click OK. So here you can see that I am now logged in as sales at knowledgebank.pro and um, let's see what options we have in our navigation. So we still see sales from my previous selection. So if I click on a drop down, you see that that's the only option now available. So I can either select the default, which will take me nowhere, or I could go to sales click on go. So this takes me to the sales page. And then the only option that I see here is main. So I select main and click on go. Okay, now let's try to log in as HR at knowledgebank.pro. We can see that my current email address is HR at knowledgebank.pro. But wait a minute, I still have sales as an option in my drop down. And if I click on a drop down, I see correctly HR and I also see sales. Now this is, you might say it's a bug or you might say it's a feature of Power BI Desktop, but that's just how this works. If I already had a selection before the security rules were applied, that selection will stay and remain in this slicer. So if I now select HR, click back on this, you see selection of sales now is gone. And now it's properly showing me the only selection I'm supposed to see. And if I click on go, 
Then this takes me to the HR page. And again, the only option that I see to come back is main where I will come back again. So that's about it. If you would like to be able to implement a dynamic dropdown navigation, the only thing that you may want to do to make it to, to make it a little bit more interesting or a little bit more sophisticated is the following. In my case, what we're doing is in the map table, we're listing all of the pages that the user can see. Therefore, the logic here is contained. If you have a lot of pages in this report and you just want to exclude a handful of them, the other way you might do it is create a table of all the pages that the user cannot see. And then what you would do is you would, instead of using contains, you would say not contains. So if, uh, if it's the page I'm not supposed to see, then you will just exclude it. And otherwise the default will be, I can't see this page. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, go ahead and download the page, the, the desktop file in my blog. Link is going to be in the description. Hope this helped. Bye.